Meet the Smoot, a unit born from a college prank at MIT in 1958. A group of fraternity pledges led by Oliver Smoot set out to measure the length of Harvard Bridge, but not with a conventional measuring tape. Instead, they used Oliver himself, who measured five feet and seven inches. The students laid him down end to end across the bridge, marking each smoot along the way. The final count, 364 smoots and one ear. The smoot quickly gained popularity, becoming a beloved local tradition. Today, it's even recognized by Google Earth and is repainted on the bridge every year by MIT students. It's a testament to the playful spirit of innovation and a reminder that measurement isn't always about precision. Sometimes, it's about the story behind the numbers. So, next time you cross a bridge, think of the smoot. Dive into history with the dram, an ancient unit of mass used by apothecaries. This pint-sized measure dating back to the Greeks and Romans has quite a fascinating tale to tell. In the olden days, when medicine was more art than science, the dram played a vital role. Apothecaries, the pharmacists of yesteryears, used it to weigh out medicines and concoctions with precision. Just imagine a world where your daily dose of medicine wasn't measured in milliliters or milligrams, but drams. A dram, to give you a sense of its size, is equivalent to just 1 16th of an ounce. That's roughly the weight of a single piece of bread or a small slice of apple. Now isn't that food for thought? So in the ancient world your medicine dosage might have been prescribed in drams. A small unit indeed but one that carried great responsibility in the realm of health and healing. Stretching back to medieval times the L was used by tailors to measure cloth. This unit, with a length of about 45 inches, harks back to a time when trade and commerce were blossoming, and precision was of paramount importance. Tailors and cloth merchants across Europe would use the L, a measure that varied slightly from region to region, but always with the aim of ensuring fairness and uniformity. It was a time when the length of your arm, or the L, could decide the elegance of your attire. This unit, although largely forgotten today, played a crucial role in the evolution of trade and fashion. It was the backbone of the textile industry, ensuring that a yard of silk in London was the same as a yard of silk in Paris. So, next time you're out shopping for fabric, why not ask for an L? Printers and typographers will know the Pika, a tiny yet mighty unit that rules the world of printing. This unassuming unit plays a colossal role in the creation of the printed word. Here's the scoop. A pica is approximately one-sixth of an inch, or to be precise, 0.16667 inches. It's used to measure everything from font sizes to column widths, margins, and gutters. But why such a peculiar unit, you might wonder? Well, it dates back to the days of manual typesetting, where it was easier to divide an inch into six equal parts rather than ten. It might seem odd in today's decimal-driven world, but the pica has persisted, proving its worth in the precision it brings to the printed page. So, every line of text you read owes a little to the pika. When it's time to snuggle, the tog comes into play. Now you may be wondering, what on earth is a tog? Well, let's dive into this warm and cozy world. Originating from the word thermal overall grade, the tog is a unit of measure specifically designed to determine the warmth of your bedding. That's right, from your fluffy duvets to your snug blankets, the tog is the unsung hero that ensures you stay just the right temperature during those chilly nights. It quantifies the thermal insulation of textiles, giving you a clear idea of how warm your bedding will keep you. So, next time you're purchasing a duvet or a comforter, take a closer look at the TOG rating. A higher TOG means more warmth, while a lower TOG is perfect for those balmy summer nights. So, your cozy winter nights might owe a lot to the humble TOG. Ever heard of measuring distance by leagues? It's a unit of measure that harks back to an era when travelers navigated vast landscapes without the assistance of GPS or satellite maps. A league is an old unit of length that was used to denote substantial distances. Though it varied from place to place, a league was typically equivalent to about three miles. It's a unit that has been deeply ingrained in storytelling and folklore, featuring prominently in tales of adventure and exploration. From Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea to the saying a league of their own, it has indeed left its mark on our language and culture. The League illuminates a time when the world was a larger, more mysterious place where distances were vast and journeys were epic. So next time you are on an adventure, remember the League. If you're stacking firewood, you might use a cord. Now this isn't your typical extension cord we're talking about. No, the cord is a hefty unit of measure used specifically for stacking firewood. Imagine a pile of neatly stacked wood reaching 4 feet high, 4 feet wide, and 8 feet long. 
That's the size of a cord, encompassing a total of 128 cubic feet. Quite a substantial amount, isn't it? This unit of measure was established in the early 19th century, and is still used today, particularly in North America. So, whether you're preparing for a cozy winter by the fireplace, or ensuring you have enough wood to fuel your log cabin's needs, the cord is the go-to unit. It's a testament to how our ancestors adapted to their environments, creating units of measure that were practical and relevant to their lives. So this winter, why not stack your firewood by the cord? In the silent world of acoustics, the Sabin measures sound absorption in materials, a unit that might not be on your daily radar. The Sabin is nonetheless crucial in the world of sound. Named after Wallace Clement Sabine, a pioneering acoustician, the Sabin quantifies the sound absorption power of materials. Imagine stepping into a concert hall, the music flowing around you. The quality of that sound, its clarity and richness, is in part due to the Sabin. In the science of sound, materials absorb sound waves to varying degrees. This is measured in Sabins. This unit helps architects and sound engineers design spaces that sound as good as they look. From concert halls to recording studios, even down to your favorite cozy coffee shop, the Sabin is hard at work. So the next concert you attend, remember the Sabin. It's the unseen hero ensuring your auditory experience is just right. Meet the Daraf, the ghost of the electrical world. This phantom unit might not be as familiar as volts or amps, but it plays a crucial role in the complex dance of electrical charges. The Daraf measures something called elastance, which in layman's terms is the inverse of capacitance. Capacitance is the ability of a system to store an electric charge. So the higher the elastance, the lower the system's capacity to hold that charge. Think of it as a sort of electrical resistance, but instead of hindering the flow of current, it hinders the storage of charge. While not commonly used in everyday electrical applications, the Daraf is a key player in higher level electrical engineering and physics, helping us understand and control the intricate interplay of electric forces. So the electrical world has its own bizarre unit, the Daraf. And finally, the GAL, named after Galileo. This unit measures acceleration due to gravity. A GAL is not your typical unit of measure. Instead, it takes its name from the legendary Italian astronomer, physicist, and engineer, Galileo Galilei. This unit is used to measure the acceleration that is imparted by gravity, that invisible force that keeps us grounded on our planet. It's a small unit, with one GAL being equal to just one centimeter per second squared. It's often used in the field of geophysics to calculate slight variations in the Earth's gravitational field, and it's an essential tool for scientists studying earthquakes and other seismic activities. Even though we might not use it in our everyday lives, the GAL plays a crucial role in helping us understand the world beneath our feet. So, the subtle yet powerful force beneath our feet is measured in GALs. We've journeyed through some of the most bizarre units of measure. We've laid down across the Harvard Bridge in smoots and measured potions in drams. We've tailored garments to the L, and printed books to the Pika, we've cozied up under tall grated blankets, traveled vast distances in leagues, and prepared for winter with a cord of firewood. We've designed soundproof rooms with sabins, danced with electric charges and daraffs, and felt the subtle pull of gravity in gals. These unusual units, from the whimsical to the scientific, remind us that the world is full of wonder, and every measurement tells a story. So, next time you measure something, Remember that there's a unit out there as unique as the task at hand, and who knows, maybe you'll invent the next smoot or gal. Thanks for watching 10 bizarre units of measure you never knew existed. Keep measuring your world.